Watch what Apollos did right here. This is a man that's eloquent in speech, the word says. You know he's an educated man. You know he knows the scriptures and he's refuting all these educated Jews, these religious folks. And he's teaching, he's showing them in the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. They got all these books of the Bible that they're studying in and going to these religious synagogues and, and working on these things. And here he is, this eloquent man, fervent in spirit, that understands the scriptures. And here comes two strangers to him that had the spirit of God in them, the Holy Spirit. And they say, brother, can we talk to you for a minute? Can we, can we, can we holler at you just for a second? We just, when you get a chance, when you get done, can we talk to you? Read between the lines right here because I'm going to break it down the way the Spirit showed me. Can we talk to you for a minute, brother? Yeah, yeah. Give me one second. He comes over. Yeah, what's up? You got a question about Deuteronomy or uh, some, uh, a part of Exodus right there where Jesus is revealed in, in, in the tabernacle? You, in, any questions in there? They're like, no, nah, brother. Um, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? We see that you can break the scriptures down like nobody else. Brother, we see that you are fervent in spirit and that you are about this life. B but you're lacking something. Watch what this man did, because you know what he did. The, the scripture doesn't have to say explicitly what he did. He said, I'm listening. What is y'all talking about? And they said, we're going to show you a more excellent way. That's what the Bible said. We're going to show you a more excellent way. And you know that brother humbled himself to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you, because he was an expert in the scriptures, he was not just taking their word for it. Mm -mm. He humbled himself. He listened and he said, can we look at the word? And they said, yeah, let's look at it because we just left Paul. We was just with Paul. So Paul is a is a tiger for folks receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you that the Lord Jesus wants you to receive this gift. So here it was a man that had all this awesome light in the scriptures where he could refute, refute the Jews. I can imagine the type of speaker that he was incredible. Having been over in Alexandria and educated all these different uh, places, man, and cultured person and could get up there and talk like this boldly. But he was lacking in an area and he humbled himself to receive correction in the area where he was weak. And he filled that weakness and it became a strength. And when we turn around and look here at what happens after that, it says. After that, after he receives this Holy Spirit, after he gets this weakness patched up and turned it to a strength, it says right here, verse 28, he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly. You bring it out. But now he's speaking like Peter was. Now he's speaking like Peter in the beginning of the book of Acts when they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He is refuting the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, so here's the responsibility that every single one of us has. And I'm going to start with me. I am going to dedicate, I am going to set aside an amount of time every single day from this point forward to, to spend that extra time in the word as the Lord has shown me. As the Lord has shown me, we get so busy in in the other affairs of life and we get so busy in ministry and we got to answer this call. We got to answer this text. And I got 20 texts. I, people waiting on me right now think I neglected them. Some folks shoot back messages. Well, I guess you don't want to talk to me. They don't even realize that, that you're busy. That's no excuse because the Lord has shown me, brother. Hey, you got a weakness right here, boy. You better fix it. You better fix it. I want every single person in here to analyze if you've got a weakness somewhere. I'm not even talking about a big glaring weaknesses, but I know there's some big glaring weaknesses out there. I know there's folks out there that got big glaring weakness in there somewhere. You got to fix it. How? I'll say, okay, pastor, you're preaching to me now. You're doing a good job like most pastors do. You're good at pointing out problems, getting folks fired up, doing a little bit of yelling. You're good at pointing out problems. What's the solution? What are you going to tell me? Pray and read my Bible. I'm going to give you a strategy. You figure out what that weakness is. I want you to write it down on a piece of paper. I want you to go into the word of God and I want you to, to write down scripture references related to that specific weakness. 
If you got a problem, it's related to greed in some type of way. Go in there into the Bible and grab some scriptures out of there. Things like the love of money is the root of all evil. You cannot serve mammon and God at the same time for you will serve one and hate the other or serve the other and hate the other. Write them down. If you're having a problem with sexual immorality, find scriptures related to that. Not just in the negative, but in the positive that show you how to overcome it. Find those scriptures. It ain't going to take you long. Everybody's got a cell phone. Do a Google search. Scriptures on holiness. Scriptures on sexual immorality. Scriptures on greed. Uh, you Get in there and find them and write them down. And I want you to start reading those scriptures. I want you to start meditating on those scriptures. And I want you to put them in the first person. I want you to start declaring them and proclaiming them. Declare them and proclaim them. You're having a problem with porn. You're having a problem. You're wandering eye while you're at work and you know you're supposed to not be doing that because you're married. Get in there. Be ye holy as he is holy. I am holy as he is holy. Yes, I refuse in the name of Jesus. I refuse. What Jesus say? My wife's spirit filled, so spirit filled, pointed something out to me this week. We were talking. We were, we were thinking about somebody that we've been praying for. And she said, they're not making an effort. I said, I agree. She said, they're not. She said, what did Jesus say? If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, pluck it out. What was he saying, Stephen? I said, I'm listening. We're driving in the car. She said, if the person is having a problem because they can't stop doing something on their cell phone. Hello, I'm speaking to you. Chances are. And you got a problem here. And you just can't help it. I can't stop. Addiction's addiction's so tough. I can't stop. You know what my wife said? Throw your cell phone out the car window. Now, I'm not, I know folks need a cell phone to live. I'm not going to mama grace you like she is. But I'm going to tell you, if you can't stay off of that smartphone and stop from looking at porn and stop from gambling and stop doing everything else, go get you a flip phone. 